right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. As uh, Professor Lemieux mentioned, my name is Chris Buckler, and the uh, title of my capstone is Engineering Education. As I begin, I would thank Dr. Ann Spence, who has put in tireless effort in getting the engineering education program started. Um, I'd also like to thank Jonathan Sink, Dr. Jonathan Singer, who couldn't be here today, um, for bringing in the education department perspective as the proposal was being formed. And I would also like to thank Professor Lanou for all of her hard work and dedication in and support of the engineering education program. Thank you all. Now, as I begin, this is really the wildest spoon I have ever seen. <laughs> I pulled it out of a um, Kellogg cereal box, and it lights up and everything. And as I looked at it, I'm sure many of you are wondering how on earth a simple spoon could be interdisciplinary. I will let you all go ahead and take a look at that. And this is what the spoon looks like if it were all to be taken apart. As you can see, it's a relatively intricate, uh, it's an intricate device. So today, what I'm going to be discussing is how can an interdisciplinary approach add value to standard engineering education? Um, some of the topics I'm going to cover today is I will briefly justify why an interdisciplinary approach is necessary in engineering education. And using the spoon, I going to um, illustrate to you a, a case study of a sample engineering lesson, how that lesson can be improved by incorporating an interdisciplinary approach. So to begin, why do we even care about interdisciplinary in engineering? As I went through the, um, the standards which help to define the engineering education curriculum, I found that over 25% of those standards indicate that an interdisciplinary approach is very important. For example, standard three, as I've listed on the board, students will develop an understanding of the connections between technology and other fields of study. And several subsequent standards go into greater detail, like students will understand the historical context of technology, the environmental impact of technology, etc. So I found that very, very significant. Um, and also, the engineering design process closely mirrors the interdisciplinary research project, the interdisciplinary research test. For example, in both cases, you start off with some type of some type of event where you determine what exactly the problem is, what the focus of your research is. Then you go through a process and do research, and then in the end, you combine everything together to develop some type of solution, whereas with an interdisciplinary approach, it might be some type, might be a, um, a study about global warming, whereas engineering, you might be designing, say, a spoon like the one I've passed around. Um, so as part of this case study, I um, examined an, a, a lesson I, per, I participated in when I was doing the, um, the Project Lead the Way teacher training. This is a reverse engineering lesson where you have students bring in objects from home. The spoon was the object I chose to bring in for this, um, for this task. Um, at the beginning of the lesson, you conduct a visual analysis, meaning that you take a look at the object and determine what types of visual cues went into it. And then you go into a functional analysis. You, you, take, you look in depth at how the object works. And then a structural analysis. How is, how is it put together? How durable is it? And um, then you develop the design brief, which is basically a statement which describes the target customer, the company you're working for, the criteria that the that guide what the designer is doing. Then you disassemble the object, measure all the parts, make computer models of each part, and then you create uh, then the students create a display board, which is quite large, and I chose not to put it in here. But um, they, dis they, cr they make a, a board with all of the various parts displayed on it. Some strengths of the lesson is that it does force the students to take the engineer's perspective. It forces them to think about everything that went into the development of the device, in this case, the spoon. It also teaches very important engineering skills like computer modeling, precision measurement, the design process, things like that. But one thing that it does not address is it, it doesn't make an interdisciplinary approach explicit. It's heavily implied 
throughout the entire process, but at no point is it made explicit. There's no real experience where the kids integrate everything and really think about everything that went into the development of that spoon. So therefore, I would, in revising this lesson, I would start off by forming the students into teams as opposed to individual effort. I would, I would give the teams a list of disciplines and various perspectives. I would have the students identify those they feel are most relevant to the development of an object, like the spoon. The students would then search disciplines of interest individually. Say, for example, a student is interested in law. That student could do a patent search, perhaps, or um, child safety laws, or things like that. Then the teams could come together, share their individual findings, and create a concept map, which I, will, I did a sample I will show you in just a minute. The teams then use bridging strategies to bring all of these insights together, and then the teams use the engineering skills you want them to learn anyway to develop the, uh, to develop the model of all of the individual parts inside the device. So here I have a sample concept map that I created in this case. I, um, I felt that psychology was an important perspective. After all, the, um, after all, the whole purpose of that spoon is to create some visual impact so that people will be induced to buy the cereal. Um, so economics, is it worthwhile to even do this? How much does the device need to cost, et cetera, et cetera. And in the center, I have the focus question which is, in this case, is what factors shape the development of that spoon? And as you see, I've created several others along the way. So when teams bring all of these individual insights together, I felt that one that really applied particularly well in this instance is bridging the explanation action gap. In this case, teams would identify which disciplines are more are more involved in helping to shape the problem. Like, for example, psychology and um, law, anthropology, etc. And then you have several other disciplines which help to drive the actual solution, like engineering and economics. Economics heavily drives what types of materials are used based on the material cost. And in conclusion, I have illustrated that the standard engineering curriculum heavily implies interdisciplinary approach throughout, but at no point is it ever really made explicit. And the, the strategies that I have described really help to bring everything together and help the students develop a holistic picture of the entire situation. I, I was telling Dr. Spence yesterday, I can't, how many students can come into my engineering education classroom and for example, many of them could not figure out how to use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the length of a ramp. It's, it's no different than what they did in math class, it's just a real world engineering type situation. It's the situation fits outside of their math class, technology class box that the current education system unfortunately uh, develops. So as I mentioned, the students' views of the world tend to be very compartmentalized. And as I've, as I've mentioned, this can be solved by engaging the students in a process like the one I have just described. This way, students enter the engineering, edu they enter the engineering um, field with the solid cognitive map of several disciplines in their mind. This that could be done throughout several projects, not just a reverse engineering lesson. So this way you can get repetition in there and the students really get the entire picture. That concludes my presentation. Thank you all for being here to listen to me today and now I will take your questions. Yes, sir. Just in your research, what sort of evidence came up for what education system currently stands compartmentalized through work? Most of what I have described is based off of my own observations as, I was, as I'm teaching, but I have also read in several educational textbooks some strategies for breaking that up because um, 
the engineering, the, the education textbooks heavily um, emphasize interdisciplinary um, planning, whereas you have a team of teachers from a bunch of different disciplines get together and perhaps ed instruction might be driven by one particular topic. But in practice, that never really seems to happen. And the textbooks to some degree acknowledge that. But really, I feel the students are being robbed because everything is so compartmentalized and that really, having an interdisciplinary approach, I feel, would significantly increase their market value later on. So much of the evidence I've seen is anecdotal based on what I have observed, but I've also found in the educational textbooks some instances where um, students' views tend to get very compartmentalized and they propose strategies for breaking that up. <laughs> well, I believe in the student teacher role that is a little bit outside of the expectation, but um, the school I'm at right now, Woodlawn Middle, is under school improvement, which means that they have failed to meet adequate yearly progress for, I believe, two years or more. And as a result, the school had to develop a comprehensive plan to address how the school was going to raise its test scores. And one of the things that was in there was that you would develop teams of teachers from all of the different grades, and these teachers would consistently plan together to create coherent interdisciplinary instruction. Unfortunately, I have not observed any instances in which that has happened. Thank you. I have the pleasure of bestowing upon you a cord that signifies that Chris has met all the requirements for an interdisciplinary studies honors. If you look at the program, you will also see that graduation day, he will be walking across the stage with summa cum laude gold. Band. So congratulations for all your hard work and thank you advisors, we really appreciate that. Okay, thank you. I switch gear.